Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Craig. And if you subscribe to this channel, you will already know that I am obsessed with tropical style plants and gardens. And today I'm gonna upcycle this empty chocolate box into a terrarium inspired by the tropical rainforests of Borneo, using tiny tropical aroids, mosses, and all mounted onto wood. This is incredible and I'm just a beginner. So if I can do this with a chocolate box, then you can too. And in this video, I share every single step of my process. So what items do you need to turn your empty chocolate box into a tropical rainforest inspired terrarium? Now first, you'll obviously need a chocolate box. And this selection box is perfect because it's hinged, which makes for easy terrarium maintenance. I'm also gonna use super glue, a pair of scissors, a sharp knife, capillary matting, and for hard landscaping, I'm going for sticks, but you can use rocks or cork bark or anything that suits your preference. And then my selection of plants. Now to imitate a tropical rainforest, I'm going for mosses and tiny aroids. Now these Bucephalandra are fantastic because I can actually get these to grow on the sticks and in the high humidity environment in this tropical terrarium. Now the first step in making your chocolate box terrarium is to remove everything you don't want. Now obviously I wanted the chocolate and I ate those before I started recording this video. But we don't need this internal packaging anymore, so I'm going to recycle these. We don't need to worry about the labels, because this is going to be the back of our terrarium. And I'm going to put this capillary matting inside and I will be growing my mosses onto this material. So you won't see that once the terrarium is finished. Now I'm just gonna glue the capillary matting onto the back of my terrarium. And this is where you'll see why the labels on the box aren't an issue, because we're gonna cover that all up anyway. Now I'm just gonna dot this around. And then place the capillary matting in. Now I'll double check when you're doing this that you're gluing your matting or cloth onto the right side of the terrarium, the bit with the bad back, so that you will end up with a box like this. Now, I wanna be careful not to damage this hinge, so I need to make sure there's no material sitting in the hinge when it folds. So with the capillary matting glued in, it's now time to think about the hardscaping materials. And for that, I'm gonna use these spiderwood branches, which are fantastic, gnarly looking little sticks. And I'm gonna use this trio and glue them together to look like one awesome branch growing vertically up through my chocolate box terrarium. So to plan how it's gonna look, I'm just gonna place them in position. And then I will glue the sticks together to create the look of one really attractive branch that I can attach mosses and other plants to. And I also need to double check that they fit once the box is closed because I don't want it to be putting pressure on any of the branches. Now that looks okay. Yeah, I think that's it. So now I need to glue these sticks together and then glue them in place inside of the box. So here I've just used a super glue accelerator to get the glue to set much faster. You get a nice strong bond really, really quickly. So we've glued together our three smaller sticks to form this one really nice branch. And using that setting spray is fantastic because it just causes the glue to set really, really quickly and it speeds the whole process up. So now I'm gonna glue this into position in the box and then we can start with our plants. Nice, that is holding itself really, really well. I'm pleased with that. Right, the next step 
is to start gluing in our tropical plants. Mosses are fantastic for using in tropical rainforest inspired terrariums because they give that lush jungly appearance and they are really, really adaptable plants. And because they have rhizoids, not roots, they will grow on wood, stone, anything, so long as it holds moisture. And this capillary matting is a material that's designed specifically to hold moisture. So if I glue these to the capillary matting, the two should work really well and in time the moss will attach itself and thrive. Now I've got a mix of different mosses um, and I'm just going to experiment and see which work and which don't because I'm going to be looking after this rainforest terrarium for weeks and months and hopefully years to come. I can always adapt it and change it in the future. Now I'm going to start in this bottom left corner and I'm going to work my way up across the terrarium. So I'm just going to tuck all my mosses in underneath and just put a small dab of super glue on to make sure they have a helping hand before they start actively growing and hopefully fixing themselves onto that capillary matting. Now you might be worried about using super glue with plants but it's actually perfectly safe. Super glue does them no harm at all. I wouldn't use the catalyst um, setting spray with plants because it can generate heat when the glue is setting and heat will damage the plants. So just the super glue when I'm gluing the plants in place. What's really nice about this capillary matting is that it has a rough surface. So as I've been working my way along, I found that I don't even need to super glue the moss into place. The rhizoid holds it firmly against that rough surface and in time it will adhere to this and hold itself perfectly well. Now with mosses they like a moist environment so I need to make sure they don't dry out. So I've got my spray bottle of terrarium juice which is basically not tap water because tap water at least here in the UK contains chlorine and plants can be quite sensitive to things like chlorine. So this is distilled water. So with my first variety of moss in place, I'm now gonna to switch to another moss. Because so I think these mossy terrariums always look fantastic when there's different textures and different shades of green just in the mosses. So this one is from another supplier and it's actually sold as an aquarium moss, but it will grow perfectly happy out of water as long as it's in a high humidity environment, which this chocolate box terrarium will be. Now this is a taxophyllum and I will put a link and all of the plant names in the description of the video. Now with this moss, it comes in a slight tangle. So all I'm gonna do is just gently tease it apart and then I can use it in smaller sections like this. Now you're really starting to see what I mean about having different shades of green and different textures by using different mosses. So you've got variation here already which is adding visual interest in my chocolate box terrarium. So we've gone for rules of three. We've got three branches and we're going to go for a third type of moss now and that's because when you do things in odd numbers, so threes or fives, they tend to look so much more natural. So by getting a third shade of moss, you're gonna get a different texture and something a bit more visually interesting up in this top corner. Then we can move on to working with the plants that are gonna be growing on our actual branches. So for our third moss, we're gonna go for Vesicularia, which is a weeping moss. Now, these plants come in these pots in vitro which are tissue cultured plants. So as I say, these plants don't need soil to grow. And this is just gonna be a perfect way for me to start placing it onto the moss, onto the uh, capillary matting, and it should settle in perfectly well. I will use a bit of glue if necessary, but I'm hoping I won't have to.
I have to say, I am really pleased with how this is looking. Yeah, the moss is a little bit sparse in some patches, but in time it will grow out and soon fill out the space. Now it's time to start attaching all of our little aroids, those tropical epiphytic plants onto these wooden branches. It's Bucephalandra thea. And here you can see a spent flower that's just gone and one that's emerging. Now these absolutely tiny tropical plants are fantastic because their flowers are tiny, they stay tiny, and they will be happy growing in a terrarium for a long time. I get so frustrated when I see terrariums growing that people have put plants in that are just baby plants, but they will grow to be enormous. When I see other growers online using these plants, I get inspired because they should stay small and be perfectly in scale with everything else for such a long time. And then this is another one in this gel growing medium, which is Bucephalandra pygmea, which alludes that it's a small growing species and a cultivar called Bukit Kelam. And again, beautiful small leaves and flowering perfectly happily with lots of new leaves coming out. Now, all of these ovate leaf textures should really complement and add variety into this terrarium. So with Bucephalandra thea, out of the rock wall, we're ready to plant it. And we're gonna plant it in this gap here. And it's gonna be our hero plant because I think this is my favorite. The leaves, which are deep green on the surface and pale green on the bottom, have this beautiful silvery blue sheen to them. They're almost iridescent. And I love me some iridescent plants. So I think I can get away with just placing this one into this nook in the wood here. Bring it a bit closer. Yes, that should be fine. And again, those roots will root into the capillary matting and it will slowly spread its way around. Now you can see some of the roots there. I can always grab a bit more moss and just put it in here to cover those up. Next up, we've got a really small leaved Bucephalandra. Now this is a species cultivar called Sarimbu Brown. And the browner leaves will complement and contrast against this lush green background really nicely. But I've gone for this one because it's a small leaved Bucephalandra. You can see it's much smaller than the Bucephalandra thea that we've just mounted, which means it's not going to be competing for attention. This beauty will be our hero plant. And I'm going to have a go at mounting it on some of the sticks that are protruding out from the display so that you can see how they grow epiphytically in the wild. To mount this Bucephalandra, I'm just going to gently dry the roots just so that the super glue can work its magic. And then these roots I'm going to attach to this branch. And I'm just going to do that now. Literally, by putting a tiny bit of super glue onto the branch and then holding it long enough to adhere. And as I've said before, the super glue should not do any damage to the plant. If I were to use a catalyst to make it instantly set, that's going to generate heat. But the super glue on its own is not a problem. There we go. Absolutely amazing. So that is attached. I'm really happy with how that looks. So now we have our large hero plant that is beautifully in flower a small cultivar called Sarembu Brown. I'm now going to add some green leaved Bucephalandra. And this is that Pygmaea species, which is a small growing one. And you can see it's flowered in the pot. It's a shame we've missed it, but it will flower again. Now look at that beautiful root system. So again, I'm just going to gently dry off the roots so that I can glue this into the display. And I want the super glue to work its magic. Now the green color means it's not going to distract too much from these beautiful plants here, but it will add to the display. And again, can you see what I'm doing? If I just, yeah, that will hold itself there. Multiples of three. It just helps it look really beautiful and natural. There we go. There's actually multiple plants here. So I'm going to put one on the top branch, I think. I'll just tuck it in there and see how it looks. One here. With the roots 
possibly hanging down just to really showcase its epiphytic growing nature. Yes, and I will do one more here. Right, let's glue these plants. And we will go for one more of these plants. And look, I found one with another flower bud. So we should get two flowers in this display within its first week of its existence. So there we go, I've done it. My first chocolate box, tropical rainforest inspired terrarium. We've got three types of tiny tropical aroid growing in this terrarium. Two about to flower and hopefully I can enjoy those within its first week of existence. We've got three types of moss mounted onto three branches. I am so proud of this. Let's see how it looks. I really, really enjoyed building this terrarium out of a chocolate box. Now this is only the second terrarium I've ever made and I am seriously proud of it. I've got so much to learn and it's a journey, but if I can do this out of a chocolate box, so can you. Hopefully it's inspired you to have a go at maybe building your own terrarium. And I'll put all the links to the plants and where I got them in the description of this video and feel free to check out my plant and seed shop where I grow and sell tropical and exotic plants. Thank you so much for watching. Hit subscribe if you haven't and I will see you in the next video.